So we're uh, ready for our final live presentation of the day for today. Um, and that is uh, James Pardue from Spike. And he's going to uh, be talking with us about signage inventory and assessment with Spike and Survey123. Um, so we'll turn it over to you, James. Take it away. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, and uh, by the way, I hope everybody agrees with me that Steve someday should have his own talk show or at least podcast because he does such an amazing job. I've been actually listening to you all day. So thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nick, and all the others that have uh, helped to uh, put this together today. And also thank you for your wisdom for putting me right behind Cyclomedia because I'm actually also going to talk about field data collection, but also in a very different way. Uh, and so let me just go ahead and dive right in. So you, you may have heard of Spike. You might have seen us uh, at an Esri conference, or maybe you know somebody that uses Spike. But when we talk about the technology, right off the bat, you know, we talk about very simple tools. And we talk about bringing measurements and GPS location within reach for millions of new users simply by taking a photo. And, and that's really what it is that we do, is, is that we have a piece of hardware that you see on screen here it looks something like this. This is the spike unit that attaches to the back of a smartphone or tablet that allows people to be able to take photos, GPS locate features, and also measure them. And how we do that is using that spike laser device, which helps to provide scale within a photo, because essentially we're doing handheld photogrammetry. And we work with those smartphones and tablets, it connects via Bluetooth, to your mobile device. And it also works with the Spike app, which is free for which you can download. And from there, uh, once you have that app up and running, you can go ahead and take photos of objects. It will GPS locate those with distance offset, as well as be able to, uh, to take uh, photos that you can then measure uh, within the photos. And we've been able to work with a lot of number of different applications out there, everything ranging from signage inventory to building materials, to facilities management, I mean, you name it because that need to go out and be able to measure objects and GPS locate objects simply uh, and in very inexpensive in very inexpensive ways and just get answers right on the spot is really a ubiquitous, a ubiquitous thing. Uh, and so that's what we've really worked to develop is a very simple tool that does very simple things. It's very easy for people to use. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what exactly can I do with this spike laser? Well, this slide will tell you that and I'll also explain it uh, very quickly here as well. But number one, spike can be used to determine distance from one object to the next. So just like a laser uh, range finder or something like a Leica Disto, Disto, you simply just stand uh, where you want to start that measurement or place the spike where you want to take that measurement. Uh, put the laser on the target down range, take a photo, and it will return that measurement. But then we also do GPS locations. We collect the GPS location of the, uh, where the, uh, the spike actually is or where the observer is who's taking these measurements. And that's nothing special, right? We, we all know apps do that. But what we also do is, is that because we have this laser and we use the compass and the inclinometer from the mobile device, we're able to calculate the GPS location of where something is at a distance or with that distance offset. And that's a huge application for a lot of folks because sometimes they just wanna get, just pick up the spike, go out the door, uh, go out and get some simple GPS locations of trees, valves, signs, other pieces of infrastructure, or sometimes they even want to get it in combination with measurements. And these are the two measurements that we do. One is photo measure. So that's measuring on a 2D plane, like a wall or on this sign or something that's on the ground. And then we also do something that's called point to point measurement. That's where you stand still, point the, la the laser at one feature, then pivot and turn, take the photo with uh, a second photo, uh, using your body as a pivot point. So one photo, two photos, and it measures the distance between those two points. So as you see in this example here, measuring the distance between uh, two, two railings to be able to measure that width, or very common application is road widths. Another common application is the distance between the pole and the house to do that last line uh, for, a, for utility or, or, or a cable measurement. These are all very simple things but they're designed to be simple because what we've tried to do is try to create something that's so simple that anybody can do it. And I go back to my first point, which I made, which was taking photos with a smartphone or camera. Why do we decide to do it that way? Well, the reason we decided to do it that way is because anybody can take a photo with a smartphone or, 
or a tablet. I, I challenge you to find somebody who will admit that they don't. Uh, and so what we tried to do was to create very simple tools that allow people to be able to just go out and get field data when they need it, get the answers that they need. The, the, uh, the Spike device, we've done a number of different uh, integrations uh, over, over the years. Uh, so we've integrated with Esri, and we talk about Survey123 and some signage inventory uh, case studies uh, that we've done. I'll cover that here later. But we've also done some integrations with Autodesk, Adobe Illustrator. These are all uh, software platforms that people use very frequently, especially in geospatial circles, uh, to be able to manage assets. And measurement and positional accuracy are all very important parts of those, uh, of those, of those assets. And so what we did was is that we partnered with these companies to be able to create very simple tools, very simple workflows, so that a lot of people can go out in the field and collect data. What we've also done is, is that we've also partnered with a number of GP, mobile GPS firms, uh, and you'll see a list of them here, EOS, Sterile, Triple, Bad Elf, uh, Juniper, Geode, uh, to be able to create a more consistent and a better GPS experience because uh, Spike on its own uh, uses the compass and the GPS from a mobile device. Now, if you've done that before, you know some of the limitations of that. You're looking at three to five meters of positional accuracy on a good day. But if that's not good enough and you need to get better, uh, we allow you to be able to use these third, these, uh, uh, these third party GPS mobile devices to be able to improve the, uh, the accuracy of the, of the work that you're doing with Spike. And now you know how Spike works. Why do we build something like this? Well, you've heard me talk a little bit about this so far in the presentation, but what we noticed a number of years ago, and I'm sure you have as well, and you've adopted this in the way that you go out and collect data, is that there's that mega trend of where we see professionals seeking to use smartphones and tablets more than just in a personal context, uh, more than just answering emails or uh, you know, looking at maps for reference, but how do we really put those smartphones and tablets back to work? And one of the things in developing Spike that we really discovered was is, is that there was a huge need to be able to locate and measure things, just to simply go out and, and get it. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was we wanted to deliver a unique measuring capability to make that, that measurement process, that location process simple and accessible to any field worker so that you could train anybody in under an hour, but also accessible in cost. So um, I haven't talked about cost so far, but this little unit here costs $500. Attaches to most mobile devices and smartphones that you, uh, and tablets that you, that you already have, that you've already invested in, and there's no additional maintenance uh, and there's no additional um, licensing or anything else that goes uh, that goes through with it. So, what we wanted to do was something that tens of tens of thousands of people, and they do to this day, use it to be able to do uh, measurement location for a host of different applications. Not all just geospatial. Uh, some of them in commercial signage, at retail, and landscaping, and other things. Of where I just simply want to know how big something is, how wide something might be, how deep something might be, and also where that thing might be so that I can then go ahead and add that into our, our field data collection process. And when we were building Spike and then we decided that we wanted to work with Esri, uh, as, an Esri uh, as an Esri business partner, and we were trying to figure out how Spike could best work with, with Esri, we came across this program called Survey123, I'm sorry, this application called Survey123. And it was a perfect match because the two philosophies for these two products, these two apps were, were the same. Uh, how do I enable anybody to go out and get field data, to be able to do it accurately, be able to do it reliably? And so we set out to ask state and local governments, federal governments, uh, commercial organizations, engineering firms, why aren't you doing more field data collection? And ask yourself that question, you know, why, why aren't you doing more field data collection? And what we found is, is that the answer was, was incredibly, almost always the same. Is, is that it's costly, it's hard, it's time consuming, resource heavy, and sometimes it's just not safe. That in actuality, field data collection is the Achilles heel for many GIS professionals because we know we need to have data to make decisions. We need raw content to do the analysis. But where does that data come from and how do we get it? And to date, we've really had to rely upon uh, field data collection solutions that could only be used or could only be acquired by using surveyors, engineers, really high-end personnel, 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Absolutely, you have to do that, uh, for, especially for, for precision. But what if I just needed to get a really good estimate of what something was? Well, there wasn't really good tools for that. And that's what we set out to do with Spike and Survey123 is to take field data collection from being hard to making it incredibly easy with Spike and Survey123 so that it was easy to afford, it was easy to teach people how to do it, easy to then take out into the field, but then also manage the data because that's important to us as geospatial professionals, right? And then be able to get that data back to where it needs to be for analysis. And this is what that solution really looks like. So uh, I've simplified it a little bit for today because uh, we don't have a tremendous amount of, uh, of time for me to go into detail. And I also apologize for not being able to, to demonstrate this personally, but there is a link at the end of this uh, presentation that will take you to that um, so, that you can get, so that you can go and uh, look at Survey123 and Spike working together. But it's really just as simple so that you as a GIS administrator say, okay, we need to go out and we need to collect the assets of all the, uh, the, the trees in, in this particular park. And we need heights, and we need widths, and we need all sorts of other information to go along with it, tree, tree types, health, and all this other stuff. So I create a form for that in Survey123. I then take that, I then distribute that to uh, my field workers who are equipped with Spike. And what they do is, is that when they are in the field where there is a, something that they need to be able to go and collect something with Spike, you'll see this icon here. That's the spike icon. It would replace the one with the photo so that when you clicked on that, it would fire off the spike app that would then allow you to be able to take photos, measure in the field, exact heights, widths, and, and other types of, of information, and have that photo with the measurements uh, go ahead and auto-populate into these fields. It's automatic, there's no transcription there. So that all a person needs to do is be trained on a couple of basic concepts put the laser on the object, how to do the measurements correctly, how to save it into the form, and there you go. You have your field data collection solution. And there's two things that I really love. Well, there's a lot of things I love about this solution, but there's two things in particular uh, that I want to point out here. Number one is that uh, for the first time, we know where our measurements are coming from because we have measurements that are embossed within the photo. I can actually visually see that. So how many times did you, have you ever gotten a measurement or a location of something and said, I'm not sure that's right? Well, you had to kind of trust it because there was no visual information behind it. Well, we've combined those two things. The second thing is, is that with this, with this workflow being automated, we eliminate a lot of opportunities for mistakes in the, in the transcription. Now, very early on in my, my young GIS career working on the National Wetlands Inventory, I wish I could tell you that I never made a mistake in the field, but that would be a lie. And I think a lot of you have felt that, that, that frustration also and not realized that until you were back in the field. Well, there's a couple things there is, is that by tying these photos directly to the records and the measurements directly to those as well, you eliminate a lot of that. Uh, the other part too is, is that these photos are live and dynamic. So if there was a measurement that I missed here, I can always go back to the spike app and update those measurements. And I have that for reference as well. And so this comes in really handy. And finally, the thing that I'll leave you is with, is, with this solution is, is that for the first time, somebody from the ground up really tried to create something that was specifically designed to the novice user. We've always been really good at creating uh, solutions for that intermediate to those expert users, but it was really, no one had ever created anything for that novice user. And that's what we, that we really struck out to be able to do. So that you as a, GI, as, as, as a, as a GIS group could not only do this yourselves, but also hand this off to others who may not be as GIS savvy to go out and collect this data and have confidence in it. And a great example of that here is Carbon County, uh, which was one of the first projects that we did a number of years ago of where we had a very entrepreneurial um, uh, ArcGIS collector user uh, in uh, Utah County, a very nice lady by the name of uh, Melissa Laszlo, who took Spike and kind of rigged things behind the scenes so that Spike data could then go into uh, and update uh, fields and fields and collector. And normally, it would take them about five months to go out and collect this, this data. But for them, like many others, uh, having staff cutbacks, normally we have two or three people go out and collecting data. They only had one person to go out and collect it this season trained them on Spike, built a, built a solution around it uh, using, uh, using, using Collector. And what they were able to do is rather than them taking, it, taking them five months to do this, to do this job, uh, it just took them a little over five weeks 
and had a huge ROI that would normally that, that project that would cost them around 50,000 to execute only cost them around $5,000. When you take a look at the combination of the spike unit at $500, uh, the laptop and other things which they already had around and they were able to not have to take into the field additional GPS, uh, laptops and all these other things that they that they that they uh, that they normally that they normally would. The other thing too is is that they found it was very helpful the fact that Spike would work like Collector and like we were serving one two three today and that integration work in disconnected environments as well. Uh, and so this is what really started our relationship with Esri, which then led into us working with DOTs. So we work with over twenty five DOTs now, uh, and. The, uh, in this particular uh, project I'm talking about is signage, but we do a lot with DOTs, but to deploy Spike with Survey123 uh, with our, from ArcGIS to go out and collect, or, I'm sorry, to go out and collect dimensions of objects for signage, but they also use it for guardrails, poles, and other things like that, so that when they see damage, they have the ability for their maintenance personnel to be able to collect it. And sometimes they just go out on signage inventories, but uh, one of the great uh, comments by the um, by Colorado uh, by Colorado DOT that we use a lot. Uh, if you happen to attend some of our uh, presentations or uh, demos that we do online, is is that what used to take me months now takes me minutes because I can just grab the device, I can go out, I can get the measurements that I need, get the answers that I need. And today they have Spike deployed on, across all regions yeah, within Colorado uh, DOT. About three minutes, James. I got you. Thank you, Steve. Last slide. So, City of Winston Salem, another great example. This is actually a local government that changed an ordinance of where they had to change uh, the, the size and the heights of heights of, uh, of of signs. They went out and they uh, they solicited bids, decided to do it themselves using just the internal personnel that they did with uh, I think it was four spike units and four iOS tablets, uh, along with Survey One Two Three, went out and collected all the signs uh, within within the City of Winston Salem. Uh, we're able to see a significant cost savings to doing that as to whether to, to do it uh, you know, through, through a bid. The other great thing they were able to do was able to um, really reduce the, the, the rate of people um, contesting these signs, right? So whenever we, uh, I think we've all begin, been guilty of it, you know, that we, we've, we've gotten, um, you know, maybe a speed camera uh, fine or something like that, you know, where uh, so you were on this date and you were speeding and all these other things having that picture showing you that this is, this is the violation really seals, seals the deal. This was the same thing for Winston-Salem, where normally they would see contestion rates of somewhere in the 10 to 15% range, we were able to get that under 5% because people said, look, here's your, here's your sign, it's tied to your parcel, you're identified as the owner, here are the dimensions, you need to change this sign. And so that was a great success story as well. So these are just three I chose to, to share with you today. Um, We've uh, case studies of, 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 of signage inventories. We've done a lot uh, in a lot of other areas, uh, but once again, as you heard me say before, sign it, uh, you know, that measurement capabilities, that uh, location capabilities are pretty ubiquitous across a number of different industries. And here's some of them for your reference. And as I answer questions, I will put up my, uh, my contact information because I would love to engage with you further in a conversation. Uh, also some helpful resources. So you'll, of course, probably get a copy of this. They're embedded within the, the document that you can get here as well. Uh, but access to uh, the demonstration video of Spike and Survey123, Spike website, Spike YouTube channel, and a great Ezra community link to show you how to set up a Survey123 form for Spike. And so to Steve, I think I just finished under the time there. So yeah, Perfect. Yes, James. Thank you very much. Very interesting stuff that you're sharing. Um, and we do have a number of questions. Um, and I will also note that like many of our speakers today, uh, Spike is a uh, sponsor and has a, a spot in the virtual exhibit hall where I'm sure um, some of this information is also available, but we will make the slides available uh, as well. Um, so first question, um, what's the positional accuracy and can this accuracy be obtained in a work truck at near freeway speeds? <laughs> so. Um... <laughs> The answer to that question is, is that positional accuracy depends upon the GPS source that you're using. So if you're using a mobile device, right, the accuracy is going to be around three to five meters horizontal accuracy on average. If you're using a GPS uh, unit like an EOS Arrow or Trimble R1, depends upon how you set that up and, and what those specs are, but usually those could be down to, uh, to, sub, to sub foot. Uh, using spike as you're driving down the road at highway speeds, don't recommend it because it's really kind of hard to put that laser on an object as you're driving 50 miles an hour. 
if that's the type of field data collection that you're looking for, then I would recommend maybe something more uh, around like the, like the cycle media solution, right? Because right tools for the right jobs, right? So if you're doing for all of LA County, that's a big job. That's an enterprise job. 15 different applications with 20 different counties pitching in. Hey, that's a cycle media job all the way. I recommend you do that. But, you know, being able to go and look at things in, you know, in between a cycle media collection every five years or, uh, I just need to go out and get simple information, right? So for example, um, you brought up the example of the, of the homeless encampment. Uh, those are things that change, they're very, they're very dynamic. And so we actually have had people use that to be able to do uh, uh, things that are dynamic and moving like that, ranging from homeless camps to even um, diff changing wildlife conditions to even uh, woodpecker environments to even we've worked with the Jane Goodall Institute on occasion. He actually touched on the next question, which was about could this be used by homeless outreach workers to capture data on homeless encampments? Um, is it that easy for a non-technical person? Uh, yeah, especially when it comes to location. So, um, you know, once again, uh, you heard me talk about some of these things about safety and uh, and sometimes just not being uh, disturbing something, right? And so being able to, to stay across the street and not to disturb the individuals. And if you're just looking for a location, just putting the laser on a tent, taking the photo, you've got it. Okay, you've got that location good. of where that tent was, whatever that laser hit. And another creative uh, user out there, uh, Scott Weinstock's asking, would Spike be able to be used to measure interior dimensions from an entry point, like a vault or catch basin? Ah, so love creative users because creative users find new things for us to do all the time. And the answer is yes. Uh, so by the, uh, the content of the question, I'm guessing this is somebody within Public Works. Uh, we've worked with City of Miami and a couple of others to do uh, locations. I'm gonna start to do measurements of, of, of vaults and internal, I'm gonna start interior, um, internal, I'm gonna start interior uh, spaces. Uh, the trick is, is that you have to be able to fit what you wanna measure within that field of view, right? So it's one of the limitations of spike, right? I gotta see the object to be able to measure it. And if you can't fit it within the field of view, using photo measure uh, can be um, difficult to do, though you could also use point-to-point -point measurement to be able to do that as well. 